We started our conference yesterday learning about STEM education and how we train our future workforce. Today we're going to again look to the future. How can we prepare and attract students to the construction industry? ACE has been working to achieve that for many years and here to provoke your thinking is ACE, the place for me, is Ridge Miller, partner Crow Hor Horwath, an active supporter of uh, ACE since 2001. Welcome, Ridge. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today to talk to you about a program that is very near and dear to my heart. It's something that I'm very passionate about, and my hope today is to inspire you to have some of the same passions yourself and perhaps consider sharing them. Um, no doubt many of you in the audience are probably familiar, since we're in the state of Indiana, with the movie Hoosiers. Hoosiers is a movie about a small basketball team here in Indiana that won the state championship in 1954. A little team from Milan, Indiana, that's about 70 miles down the road on 74 towards Cincinnati. They won that game in 1954 on the campus of Butler University in Hinkle Fieldhouse, probably about a 15 minute drive from here. And it's a great story that faced about a team that was coached uh, to win the state championship and came from far behind to uh, win uh, the state championship. They faced a lot of obstacles, but they ultimately were successful. Our industry, no doubt, faces a lot of, a lot of obstacles too in terms of in terms of attracting people to our industry. <clears throat> over these last uh, over this last day and a half, I've heard several terms shared uh, in the sessions I've attended. One of the first ones I heard was people, 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 and the need for people. The pipeline of people, the concern about that, higher education, where are the people going to come from? We need to share the knowledge we have. We need over 10,000 engineers per year. We have a responsibility for engagement. We need to de demystify what we do for this profession of engineering, construction, and architecture. We need to be have others prepared for the rigors of our industry, the need for leadership, experienced project and middle management, the need for pathways, and also one that I really liked, which is have fun. And lastly, building great teams, careers, and people. All of these have to do with the program I'm here to talk to you about today that some of you in the audience are familiar with and some of you all are involved with, the ACE Mentor Program of America. The mission of ACE is to engage in sight and enlighten high school students to pursue careers in architecture, construction, and engineering through mentoring to support their advancement in the industry and the advancement of our industry. And like all of you, I'm probably the only accountant in the room, but we have a tremendous need in my profession for people to come in and play a role as accountants to serve the financial aspects of this industry and many industries. But I will tell you that like you, we are on the court of competition just as they were in the movie Hoosiers to compete for the best talent that's out there and to win the goals that are ahead of us and the objectives we have as entities, organizations, and certainly uh, universities, those that are represented here. I was fortunate to be exposed to this industry at a, this industry at a very young age in 1981, I went to work on a prison project as a general laborer. And my job was either to sweep, squeege water, move window frames and door frames to run the porta potties up and down the man hoist, uh, a number of other things, lots of tough work. And I was probably on the bottom rung of this industry. But what I saw was an industry that has multiple opportunities for people who want to take advantage of it from the bottom to the top. And I want all of you to think about how you got here today. What was your pathway? Who inspired you? Who was your mentor? Perhaps it was an employee or a boss or someone who took an interest in you. The ACE Mentor Program seeks to get involved in high schools because that's where we need to tap into the people for them to determine what their careers will be. Our program currently has 62 affiliates. I was fortunate to be one of the founding members of our Indianapolis affiliate and also our national affiliate, 
and serve on the national board along with Wayne Crew. I'd like to thank Wayne for the opportunity to talk about ACE today. But with that experience, my chosen industry to serve, just like yours, is this great industry that we call construction, where we take raw materials and we turn them into some type of finished good. In the built environment, or perhaps on what we're driving on, no matter what we do, no matter where we are, think about the opportunities in this industry and all the things that go in to make it happen. So with regard to our affiliates, each of these affiliates is in high schools mentoring kids today. And if I had to describe our program in just a few words, I would tell you that it's like junior achievement. Most of you all are probably familiar with the junior achievement program, where individuals go into the high schools and they teach kids about business. And I would tell you that generally speaking today, we don't have a great concern in the industry with respect to business. Junior achievement is doing its job of teaching high school kids about business and the possibility of getting involved in some way or form. I like to call the ACE program the junior achievement of our industry. And no matter whether you are an owner, a university, a contractor, an architect, an engineer, no matter what discipline, you can play a role in this program, believe me, because I have seen it by all of those individuals. ACE is important, and these are some of the reasons why. But I think we have an image problem. We're not attracting enough people into our industry. We're not telling them the good things about this industry and what it has to offer. President Daniels talked about the infrastructure yesterday and the needs that we have, and no doubt we will have to deal with those. But where are the people going to come from? Once again, back to the theme of this conference. Where are the people going to come from? What does the future look like? What is your legacy going to be? I will tell you that one who likes to plant many seeds as well in the industry with our people, uh, with our employees, with my clients, and with my prospects, yes, some of those seeds I will never see germinate or ripen or turn into something. Perhaps others will, but those seeds have been planted and I hope that you can be inspired to plant the seeds in other people to get into this industry and perhaps to choose ACE as a way to get involved. From a statistical standpoint, uh, ACE is a program that involves uh, over 8,000 students a year and 5,000 mentors who give of their time every other week to speak to these kids about the industry and what the opportunities are. If you look at the second line, two-thirds of our participants are minority and one-third are women. And when I look at this audience, as a 51-year-old white male, I will tell you that this industry is changing and that we have to bring many others into this industry that are out there uh, awaiting the opportunity for something in the form of a career. There's great news with respect to kids who are involved with the ACE program in high schools. We have a very high graduation rate. And I'm proud to say that our own affiliate here in Indianapolis, in which we're involved in five schools, I can't think of one ACE student who's never graduated from a high school, the ones that we've been involved with. We're gonna hear a little bit more here later uh, from one of the alumni from our ACE mentor program here in Indianapolis, Adrian Russell. But I will tell you that this program goes all year long and there uh, are, the first half of the year is a time when we try to prepare the students to understand more about the industry in the second half of the year, the students get to play roles within architecture, construction, and engineering. They get to play one of those roles actively and work as a team and begin to understand what it is like, what teamwork is about in this industry, and how each and every party has to work together, the interactive uh, project management that we heard about yesterday to make projects happen and make them a reality. In the second half of the year, they work on a student project, and we'll hear more about that from Adrian. At the end of the year, we have a scholarship banquet, and I will tell you as treasurer of our local affiliate here that all of our ACE mentor affiliates are good stewards of the money that others contribute. Uh, from a scholarship perspective, we usually give out $4,000 scholarships that are paid out $1,000 per year, and each student has to reapply each year with their grade point average. They have to show that they're still in an architecture, engineering, or construction major in their college or university that they are a student in good standing and they are fully enrolled for the next coming year. A check doesn't get written unless those criteria are met. And the good news is, is that they don't have a good GPA, people like myself get on the phone and talk to them. And we talk to their parents and we say, what's going on? What are you gonna do? How are you gonna turn it around? How can we help? 
that's active involvement, but these kids won't forget that involvement, I hope, in, the, in future years. There's a lot of opportunities to visit construction sites. This is a picture of one such visit. And as I said a moment ago, the scholarships are available to these kids. Uh, they are selected by a committee. Charlie Thornton, who's pictured here with Jane Polly, uh, was the founder of the program in 1990, and Charlie could not be here uh, this week. He's in Denver on a project and regretted that he could not be here. However, his book that many of you all have picked up is available, and it talks about the ACE program and how he began it. Uh, he appeared on a show that Jane Polly did a few years ago called Your Life Calling to talk about the ACE program. And shortly thereafter, the program was awarded the Presidential Award for Excellence in Science, Mathematics, and Engineering. The interesting thing is, is we've been talking about STEM, and technology is missing there, but our program is one of 15 selected in the country to receive this, excuse me, one of 13 programs to receive this prestigious award, and $25,000, which has been used for the mission uh, of our program. So a little bit about our Indianapolis affiliate, and then I'm gonna have Adrian Russell invite, me, uh, invite him up here on the stage with me. Uh, when I moved here, it was rather divine timing. When I was in Nashville, we began the affiliate there, and we launched it with the board. And the board is always made up of owners, architects, engineers, and contractors. And yes, even competitors, uh, which is a very interesting thing. Uh, on our own local board within the last few years, we had five general contractor CM competitors. Some of you all will recognize these names. Pepper Construction, Messer Construction, Gilbane Contracting, Hunt, Turner. Those are all competitors, but at ACE, we work together as a common team to come together and make something of our future to help these kids become a part of something that we all enjoy every day and that has benefited us tremendously. So it's pretty amazing that you have competitors on the same board working for the same cause. Our affiliate was started, many of you all flew into the Indianapolis airport. And when that airport was begun in 2003, Charlie Thornton, who was at that time chairman of Thornton and Tomasetti, suggested to John Kish, who was over the airport project, you know, if Thornton Thomas City is hired, one thing I will commit to, to you, John, and to the Indianapolis community is we will start an ACE chapter here. And in 2003, when I moved here and we got several people in the community involved, we launched the affiliate. Uh, we've been highly successful. Uh, we'll look at a couple statistics here in a minute. Uh, but we had a great board and it was a very diverse board and we still do. We have representatives from colleges and universities and the other professions of our industry. Uh, we began in three schools that are Indianapolis public schools. Typically, this program is in the public schools because that is where the most help is needed, and that is where the most opportunity is to recruit people into our business. Uh, we're now in five schools, and we have five to six more schools that want us to come in. But you know what? We're short of mentors. And I know that when you go home, if you looked up your ACE mentor program, they are probably short of mentors too. And that's where your opportunity to get involved comes in. Uh, there are roughly 75 to 90 students that participate annually in our program and there's typically 15 to 25 mentors per school, so we have a pretty high mentor to student ratio. We typically award 30 to $55,000 a year in scholarships, and today we've awarded nearly 350,000 since our affiliate became actively involved in 2004. So I spoke a couple of moments ago about the creation of pathways and what our responsibility is uh, in this great industry, and I want Adrian to come up here because I could go through PowerPoints ad nauseum and tell you all the great things about ACE, but I don't think there's any better way to tell you about the ACE program than to have one of our own alumni come up here and talk about his experience. So I've invited Adrian Russell, who is from here in Indianapolis, to tell us a little bit about his family, his ACE experience. Adrian is a great kid and he will tell you some of his background, some of the companies he's worked for and what he's doing now. But more importantly, I want you to listen to what he has to say about the mentors who influence his life and to try to put you in those mentors' shoes because um, uh, it's, it's so important that you become actively involved in this program. As an accountant, I did a little bit of math uh, before I came up here uh, this morning. And I think I'm told that you all have 750 uh, total uh, participants at this conference. So if we took 750 attendees and we broke it down into 10 mentors per team, we could have 75 mentor teams now in the country. And if we put 20 students on each team, 
we would have 1,500 students. That is 1,500 people who could potentially go into this industry because of you, your influence. You have no idea how much these kids will look up to you and the influence you're having on them. But you have to decide that this is something that you want to do. Uh, one of my um, two things, that are, three things that are important to me other than my faith and my family is education, youth, and this industry. And from a scriptural perspective, I will tell you that there's, a, there's one of my favorite verses in the Bible is St. Luke chapter 10, verse 2, which says, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out the workers into his harvest field. Now, no doubt this means something from a very religious perspective, but I think it also says the same thing to us about our industry, that the harvest of kids out there in high school is plentiful, but the workers are, are few. We don't have enough people going into this industry. And so will you be one of those workers? I'm asking the Lord for those workers, I can tell you that. And I hope some of you make a decision to do it yourself. With that, I'd like for you to welcome uh, up to the stage Adrian Russell. Uh, and we'll hear about Adrian here in just a few minutes after we get seated to my left. All right, sir. So, uh, Adrian, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your family and how you first became interested in uh, ACE. Thank you. My name is Adrian Russell. Um, I was born and raised here in Indianapolis, Indiana. I am the sixth of eight children, uh, born to two parents that have been married now for 32 years. Um, I've attended urban schools for my whole life before attending Ball State University located in Muncie, Indiana. Um, Something unique about me is the fact that there is a lot of pressure on me to succeed coming after my family and the siblings before me. With that being said, every single individual in my family before me has graduated from college. Um, various colleges, Indiana State University, uh, Indiana University Bloomington, Purdue University, also Indiana, U Indi University of Indianapolis, I'm sorry. Uh, also IUPUI, which is, you know, Indiana University and Purdue University here in Indianapolis. So there were various degrees and master's degrees that were earned before me. So I had a very unique opportunity coming in the family, you know, raised not a lot, you know, we were needy at times and opportunities were few at times, but I'm very blessed and fortunate to have been involved with individuals such as yourself that have given me an opportunity to succeed in this life as well. That's great, Adrian. You know, tell us a little bit about yourself as far as you went to Ball State University yes. and tell us what your degree was in and kind of how you started and kind of how you changed and, and uh, tell us a little bit about that at Ball State. Ball State, by the way, for those of you uh, who are not familiar with our state, is located in Muncie, Indiana, up toward the north uh, eastern part of the state. Yes, I went to Ball State University. Originally, I went to Ball State. I had a strong interest my whole life to be an architect. Um, that's something that I wanted to do since I was a child. And Ball State University has an excellent architecture program, the College of Architecture and Planning. So I was led to Ball State through my interest in architecture. And after completing one year of architecture at Ball State, I realized I was probably better suited for construction and construction management. So I then made the switch over to building construction management gotcha. for my sophomore year. Excellent. And I remember that change. I get the applications from the students. And I remember Adrian talking about architecture being his real focus. And then I saw BCM come in on your application one year. And I said, wow, he's kind of changed things up. Uh, now, you're currently with Pro Proclad. Tell us what you do for them. Tell us a little bit about Proclad and kind of how uh, that came about. Yes, Proclad Incorporated, they, we are basically a specialty subcontractor in which we specialize in metal panels and building exteriors and building envelope systems. Um, they are located in Noblesville, Indiana. We do work all over the country from the West Coast, East Coast, South and North. Uh, we do a lot of work, a lot of fascinating work with you know, a lot of new technologies in terms of building construction. I am a project engineer with ProClad and I work with the quality control and quality assurance department. Gotcha. So Adrian, how did you first hear about ACE? What was, what was it that piqued your interest? What, uh, what was it that triggered your involvement? 
actually, I was very close to one of my professors in high school in which he taught several classes of mine and courses in high school from computer-aided drafting to silver engineering, hand drafting, and when the opportunity came my senior year at Arsenal Technical High School, uh, Mr. Powell, which, who was my instructor, he informed me of a great opportunity in which he had heard of that was coming to our school, the ACE Mentor Program. And that was the very first time I'd ever heard you know, that name. And you know, I signed up for it, and the rest was really history in terms of sure. it was an awesome program, awesome experience. Absolutely. It's interesting, uh, this is our 10th year here in Indianapolis, and Jeff Powell, who Adrian is speaking of, uh, is still involved with the program. Mm -hmm. He gets the kids involved. I didn't talk about this earlier, but one of the great things about our program is that when we go into high schools, we make sure that the high schools are committed to what we're trying to do. Uh, that's very important because when you're asking volunteer time from the mentors and they're contributing to the program financially, it's important that the schools are committed to. And Arsenal Tech is actually just east of downtown, uh, right over this way. Great school, and we've had a lot of great mentors. Uh, Rex is over there shaking his head going, absolutely. You probably have people that Eli Lilly. My grandfather went to Arsenal Tech and, and wow. graduated from there a long, long time ago. So it, it's definitely put out a lot of leaders in our industry and so forth. Um, so uh, describe the ACE experience to us, Adrian. Uh, kind of walk us through the program. Uh, you know, what's the year like? Uh, what, what can kids expect? Well, they can expect, it's definitely a commitment, and I don't mean that in a negative sense. I mean, it's a commitment in which the mentors that are involved with the ACE Mentor Program, they are all in, heavily committed to the program, heavily committed to uh, the success of the kids and the students. Um, the program starts off in the fall when the school year starts. It starts off probably a month into the school year after kids, you know, are able to come get acclimated to, you know, the pace of the year, their schedules or what have you, their course load. And the mentors, they come in, usually a team of, as you said in your presentation, about 15 or 20 mentors, they come in. And after there's a signing up period, you have your initial session in which the mentors, usually led by the lead mentor, you know, they inform the students of basically the whole purpose of the program and the vision of the program for that particular school year. And you know they want to make sure that the students are going to want to be actively involved, not you know where they come one week and you know they miss right. two or three weeks. Right. Usually sessions are held once a week throughout the entire school year. Starting off in the fall, students get awesome opportunities to go, you know, visit job sites, to go visit you know various offices and go to presentations or what have you, just to get their feet wet in terms of you know an introduction to the industry, an introduction to what certain companies do, what certain trades do, whether it be architects, engineers, project managers, what have you. And later on in the school year, around springtime, that's where you could really say the students, they work on a capstone project. For any of us that have been in school, whether it be you know, architecture or construction, usually our final course is a capstone course in which there is a presentation in which we do for that entire semester is the project and students in high school we get the opportunity to work on a capstone type project where you know there's an agenda given there's specifications you could say given there's drawings given and the students basically they take ownership in terms of administering this project from sure. its conception design all the way to explaining to you know a room just such as this one you know, how would we go about building this? How would it be made possible? What is our vision for this particular project? So it's an awesome experience all the way around. Yeah, and, and I, as I understand it too, because I've, I've seen it as well, but they all play different roles uh, yes. as designers, as contractors, as engineers, so that can be structural, mechanical, electrical, civil, et cetera. They, you're actually given a site, aren't you? And you have to make it work within that site or a facility. What was y'all's project the year that you did? I'm trying to remember. Was it the Ronald McDonald House? No, our project was actually the school, wasn't it? A school cafeteria, or no? Or <laughs> I guess I better be quiet. Let yeah, him answer you. the question, right? <laughs> thank you. Our project was actually, it was actually this space right here in which this hotel is standing. This was at this time this project had, or this hotel had not yet been built, and there was a project in which we designed a hotel similar to this very project in this exact space. I got you. 
Uh, a few years ago, the city hosted the Super Bowl, and I wanted to share with the audience that actually some of the ideas that the ACE mentor team came up with relative to Georgia Street, just beyond St. John the Evangelist, uh, the largest Roman Catholic church over here, some of the ideas that our teams came up with were incorporated into some of the final design. So we actually left an imprint on the community, which I thought was interesting. Um, so, you know, when you changed majors, uh, Adrian, from architecture to building construction management, would you attribute that to the fact that the program had helped you understand all the aspects of this industry? It gave you a broader vision? Absolutely. Tell us about that. Absolutely. Actually, the awesome thing about that was the fact that, you know, my issue with, you know, the architecture program at Ball State, and this is just my own personal issue, yeah. it was a very abstract type of curriculum where I'm more of a practical individual and I have a practical approach to, you know, how things should be built in the real world. Sure. <laughs> so with that being said, I was actually able to use a lot of my mentors that I was already affiliated with through the ACE program and I was able to speak to some of these professionals in which I already had, you know, knowledge in terms of the different views towards, you know, the different trades and the different aspects of the overall industry. So these mentors, they were able to, you know, guide me in terms of where I might be better suited. And you, you called them, you, you emailed things back and forth to really get yes. their input as far before you really began to think, you know, I think I do want to go into BCM. Yes. As and opposed to architecture. I'd add to that, had I not had, you know, these mentors, you know, this network that I gained through the ACE program, I may have, who knows, I may have maybe left, left the, industry. the industry altogether. Sure. You could have become an accountant. An accountant. No. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. There's not enough of us. And I know I'm the only one in the room today, probably. But uh, with regard to the program, what did you most enjoy you know, about the program, the mentoring sessions? Uh, what, what do you remember? Maybe you could tell us um, you know, a little bit about some of the mentor sessions you remember the most, uh, or the one that, you know, maybe the one or two that had an impact on you. What happened? What, you know, give us a sense of, like we're all sitting there, what happened? Uh, what I enjoyed most was the fact that every week, every session was so different. Uh, when I was actually in the program my senior year at Arsenal Tech, they were working on the Indianapolis International Airport. So it was awesome, you know, one week we could go to a job site where a hotel was being built. The very next week we can go to a massive billion dollar project such as that and really get an intricate tour and you know, really see what's going on. And these are things for a lot of us growing up in an urban community, we've never experienced things such as that before. Sure, so sure. it was an eye opener in every sense. If I remember, I think the first job site tour we did was the control tower at the airport. Were you at that? Yes. Yeah. It's interesting, uh, this was uh, the airport, like Adrian said, was our first project. And there were some kids up there in that control tower that never had even flown on a plane mm -hmm. in their entire life. But yet they're in the control tower of what now is the Indianapolis International Airport. And I remember talking to some of the kids and they were like, wow, this is amazing. You know, I, I wouldn't have had a chance to come here. The interesting thing about air traffic control towers, I found out from the guy who was giving us the tour was, uh, and this was 10 years ago or nine years ago, I guess it was, but he said, he said, you all are very fortunate to be up here because once the air traffic control tower is turned over to the FAA, uh, the Federal Aviation mm -hmm. Administration, nobody, except badged people who are FAA members have a chance to go to the mm -hmm. control tower. I don't know if you remember that or not. I but, do remember that. Uh, so everybody felt really fortunate to, to be up there, something you can tell your kids. Um, so ACE has obviously influenced your, your career and your life. Can you give us some, some other thoughts along those lines, Adrian? How else has it influenced you? What has been its imprint uh, on you? And, and maybe you can tell us about some of the mentors, what they do or what they did. Um, to influence your life? It has influenced me so heavily, and I mean that, and I say that, you know, totally sober. It has influenced me, and it's something that I'll remember for the rest of my life in terms of some of these relationships that I've been able to build through this program in which there were mentors that I met as a young kid in high school, you know, where I just had a dream to be an architect, and that was really it. And now sure. there's so many things. I'm 25 years old now. That was eight years ago. And now, you know, looking almost 10 years later, I'm still in contact with so many of these mentors. And when I've experienced hardships, whether it be as a student or even as a professional, it's just such a blessing to be able to use these men and women, you know, to be able to speak with them and get guidance from them. And sure. they, even at this point in my life, are still mentors in which 
I keep close communication with them, and they've helped me through difficult times. I would definitely say that. Good. So, so really, the encouragement to for to to to, to say to keep keep after it and certainly. stay strong and so forth. Um, what do you think? Um, and I know this is kind of reversing the role, but what do you think the mentors get out of the program? Uh, you know, obviously some level of satisfaction, but uh, based on your discussions with those mentors, what do you see in them that they've gained from the program? I feel that for the mentors, it's probably most certainly a very re refreshing experience in terms of, you know, working with youth. It can be, you know, renewing in terms of a lot of individuals that may look like you, where, you know, gray hair or what have you. And, 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 and you know, working with, you know, young kids and seeing, you know, young kids that have a dream, it might, you know, help those individuals remember the time where they were in those very same shoes in that very same position. And I feel that for the mentors, a lot of them, they probably really start to take it personal in terms of wanting to see this young child, this young student succeed the same way that they have. So I feel that it is probably most certainly a refreshing, rewarding experience. I got you. Um, you know, Adrian, you've been exposed to the industry. You, uh, Adrian did uh, some internships, and one of the things I will mention uh, that is a benefit of the program to the mentors themselves is that a number of the companies who have been involved have hired uh, the students that have come out of college, uh, colleges and university with their uh, degrees. Uh, we have electrical subcontractors, mechanical subcontractors, uh, some local architecture firms, and so forth. Uh, I think you spent some time with an electrical contractor in an internship, a civil engineering firm uh, in an internship, and also some time with the GCCM, I think maybe two, uh, before you uh, ended up at ProClad. Correct. Um, what do you see as the biggest shortages and challenges of our industry today with regard to people and talent? What do you see right, right now at, at ProClad? Uh, or, or based on your other experiences, what, what do you see as, as a young graduate and somebody new to the industry? Um, I would probably say the biggest shortage that I see personally is the lack of diversity. And I say that not just, you know, minorities such as myself, but also women in the industry. You know, I went to school with uh, Brittany Weather. She was in the program with me and she, you know, completed a double major awesome degree, awesome school that she went to in which she's a strong asset to an industry such as this, you know, a very bright individual. I feel that the lack of diversity, it impacts any, any industry in the world. And, you know, you use a sports reference Hoosiers in your presentation. And as you gave that example, I thought, you know, Major League Baseball, uh, you know, basketball and, you know, even soccer, you know, we see, you know, coming off the World Cup, there are so many different sports leagues in which they are still successful to this day because they started to tap into resources and potential overseas. You know, Major League Baseball, for instance, the Dominican Republic and the island areas. You know, they there's so many professional baseball players in the industry today that 40, 50 years ago, there weren't many Dominican players. And now they're some of the best players in the world yeah. coming from the Dominican Republic. The construction industry, the construction industry I'm sorry, is the very same way where diversity or the lack thereof is definitely an issue, but yeah. there are individuals, and I don't say this in an arrogant way, such as myself and so many others that I know where they have the potential, they just don't necessarily have the guidance to be you know, the next great thing or the next industry leader, the next great you. project manager, architect, yeah. engineer. It's a great point. You mentioned uh, Brittany Weathers, and uh, one of the things I wanted to share too about Adrian that I didn't share in this slide, but uh, Adrian, Adrian also applied for another uh, so, uh, association scholarship, the Indiana Subcontractors Association, uh, which I'm fortunate to serve on the board of, and we've been awarding scholarships too. We're really focused right now on the trades because that's a huge issue, the, the uh, vocational trades that we need a lot of people of in the industry. Um, but uh, Brittany Weathers, uh, who works now at Ermco, actually, a uh, very large commercial electric, electrical contractor, uh, sent me an email two weeks ago, and she said, hey, I've got one final semester. I'm an IUPUI. Can you move up the, uh, the $2,000 that we still have yet to owe her? And we did. Uh, she was trying to get her tuition paid so that she could enroll. And so if you think about what we're trying to do to keep these kids in school and to help them, I've had phone calls from kids that say, I don't have any money left for food. 
can can uh, can I apply early for our? We won't go beyond the thousand dollar increment each year. That's definitely. You know, we want our kids to plan a budget too, uh, and budget on what they're going to get. And granted, a thousand dollars is probably, you know, some of the money toward their scholarship. They're probably getting it from other places too. But um, but Brittany is uh, she has one more semester to go, so it's going to be fun to see her impact on the industry. Um, so uh, I don't know if you remember uh, NFL today many years ago, but uh, you remember John Madden, like he coached Absolutely. the Houston Oilers uh, for many years in the Raiders. He, uh, he always used to have these silly commercials on. They were ace, they were about ace hardware. And uh, John Madden always used to say uh, at the end of the commercial, ace is the place for me. And so, you know, Adrian, is, is ACE been the place for you, and is it something that you're going to give back to uh, as well? Uh, without question, ACE, this is very corny, as we would say in my generation, but ACE is the place for me. Good. And <laughs> um, I say that, you know, based off much of my success, and I mean this in every fiber within me, much of my success has been directly contributed to one you, and I, you know, thank God for you, been so such a blessing to my life and I really mean that and I appreciate you and also you know <laughs> but also you know so many other mentors and experiences that I've had that came directly from the ACE mentor program and it's something that you know I have absolutely no reservations in terms of even things like this you know anytime you ask me to do anything affiliated with ACE it's a quick email back absolutely so it's definitely something where I know I'm here today because of this program and I'll do anything I can to give back to this program. Absolutely. That's great. That's great. Well, it's great to hear that, that type of commitment and so forth. I know we want to take a few minutes to, to open it up to the audience for some questions, Adrian, for you uh, and for the program. And there's some time afterwards. I do want to encourage everyone to stop by our table outside. It's just beyond the registration desk. Our executive director, uh, John Strock, is in town, flew in yesterday from Washington which is where our national affiliate is based. And also our regional director, Monica, is in with us too. She's over one of the regions of the country, including uh, Indianapolis. And so come by and ask us how you can get involved, what your role is and, and what you can do. And I know it sounds corny, but the question I ask you all is, is ACE the place for you? And is this something that you want to do? Uh, just real quick, by a show of hands, and maybe we can bring up the lights uh, and ask some questions. But uh, just by a show of hands, how many people are involved with the ACE program or their companies? <coughs> Not very many hands, but those of you that are involved, thank you, thank you uh, very much. With that, we'll turn it over to uh, the audience for any questions, so please feel free to ask. Adrian, this is Rex Phillips from Eli Lilly. Okay. I, uh, you, you talked about changing majors uh, after your freshman year. I'm, I'm curious, did you consult with your uh, mentors or professors and uh, what how did you make the decision to move from architecture to some other program? Yes, thank you. Actually, the very first thing I did, I did consult with some of my mentors. And you know, I told them, you know, I've completed my first year in the College of Architecture and Planning, and some of the issues that I had where I said, you know, I don't really see myself fitting into this program. It's not what I thought it would be, you know, but I gave it a year and I'm just, you know, not really sure which way I should go. And you know those mentors, they really helped me in terms of saying, well, don't think, don't give up on this industry. You're probably just better suited for something else. And they begin to ask the questions, you know, speak with some of your counselors or some individuals on campus for other programs, such as building construction management. Naturally, that is something I considered when I was in school was going for building construction management, going to Purdue University. So with that being said, I then contacted the uh, I would say the dean of the program at Ball State University, and we spoke for a few weeks over the course of that summer going into my so sophomore year, and that's where I made the decision, which was one of the best decisions I've ever made, <laughs> to go into the building construction management program. Wayne? Okay. I thought that was Wayne. Wayne Krug, yes. Uh, so, Rid, you're an accountant. So how in the world did you get to be part of the ACE? Not get to be, because I'm sure they take anybody, but. <laughs> <laughs> did I say that right? That didn't come out right at all, did it? No. Um, but, but you were with the affiliate in Nashville and then came up here to Indianapolis. What I in the world is an accountant doing in the ACE program? 
That's a, thanks, Wayne. And, and by the way, I want everybody to know that I'm up here today because of Wayne and his graciousness in letting us share this program. Wayne serves on the national board with myself uh, on the National Council of Advisors and asked me last November to consider doing this since this was in my hometown here in Indianapolis. Um, to answer your question, Wayne, um, as I said, you know, I, I spent a couple of summers back in 1981, 82, 83 working on construction job sites. The industry is fascinated. My role in this industry is to serve clients from a financial surety bonding perspective and really deal with the risk of the business. Uh, because in this industry, and it's in my bio, but you know, you all take so much risk for so little reward. And anybody that does that, I have a tremendous amount of respect for, and it's an industry that is very unique. And, and I fell in love with the industry. And what happened was in 2001, I got a phone call from one of my clients um, in Nashville, Tennessee, a gentleman by the name of Bob Surratt, who was a vice president uh, with uh, the parent company. That was the name of the company. They were about a $50 million GCCM. And he said, Ridge, we're going to start a program here in Indianapolis, or excuse me, in Nashville, uh, and it's to mentor kids to go into the construction industry. And, and he said, we want a good board. Uh, we're going to have owners on this board and members from the industry, but we need a good attorney and we need a good accountant. Uh, we need a treasurer and we need somebody from a legal perspective to make sure that we govern the organization properly. Uh, we need an account to make sure that we're accountable for how we spend our money because when contributors give money, they want to know how much is going to scholarships. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, to make sure that we keep everybody paid and that we monitor uh, as good stewards of our of uh, our donated funds for the kids that give money. So that was my first uh, that was my first involvement with it, Wayne. Uh, we started the board. We went into three schools. We had 40 kids in the first year, and we gave uh, 20,000 in scholarships. It just blew my mind. We had our banquet, which we have here in Indianapolis too, and we have three to 400 people who attend these banquets, and that's our biggest fundraiser. And so we had a lot of organization. Uh, one, of a, one of the board members, in fact, is here today. Brian Hall is somewhere in the audience. And all of the, all of the printing and everything uh, his company graciously gives. The relationships that come about from this, uh, you know, um, uh, John Nobles, who received the award last night, said something that when you give without the expectation, without this expectation of getting, uh, it's amazing what kind of things can happen. And I will tell you that. I'm invested in ACE, but it's given so much back to me in terms of the satisfaction, but also relationships that are really, we have a, we have a shared passion, and, and so that's the reason why I got involved with it, because it's, it's just a great program. It's, when you change lives, there's no better feeling I don't think you can have than that. So thanks. Great question, Wayne. Hopefully that answers it. I know we're at uh, 8.20, so I don't want to, uh, anybody else? Adrian, I think you're a remarkable individual and you should be applauded. Thank you. And I think the ACE program is working because I'm an accountant and I'm an, I'm an architect though. I'm an architect. Sorry, and you got I didn't some. mean any offense to you. <laughs> <laughs> and I gotta say, if you got the advice through the program, to move into construction management, that was very good advice. I mean, architecture is a great profession, but you got very good advice there. So I just applaud you. Very good job. It. Thank the program. You. At our uh, sp sp spring banquet uh, that we have, uh, which is our biggest fundraiser, we usually raise fifty to 60000 there after our costs. Uh, and it also supports our other costs during the year for insurance and things like that. Uh, but one of the things that Adrian and the other students get a chance to do is to stand up uh, in a suit, in a dress, uh, you know, formally attired, right. and give a presentation to an audience just like this. And for many of these kids, it's the first time they've ever done anything like this. And that's a lot of fun to watch them get up there. The people in the audience are people from industry. They're people from the administration of the school. Uh, there are always people in there that are their teachers, and of course the mentors are there as well. And so it's fun to watch, you know, Adrian and the others uh, graduate from the program. Um, you know, when we go into the high schools, that is where people are beginning to think about careers, and that's why that's where we are placed. I would make some arguments to say that we could almost be in the junior high schools as well to begin to plant the seeds. So. Um, any other questions that we might have from, uh, from the audience? I do have one last request. You're going to be mad at me for doing this. But 
is there any way, and we didn't plan this by the way, so I'm sorry in uh -oh. advance. <laughs> is there any way we can pull up the picture that we showed for him when he went up on stage to do his opening remarks? Can we, can we put that on screen? Okay. There it is. So the, the next time, if we ever get the opportunity to do an, another presentation, can we make sure that you guys reject that picture of him <laughs> from, from <laughs> don't, don't accept any pictures from him from the 80s or from the 90s. <laughs> Give him an email back and say, no, send us a recent picture. <laughs> and we would appreciate that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know when, uh, when Jewel Walter sent me an email and she said, Ridge, can you send me a picture? Make sure it has so many dots per inch or whatever the industry terminology was. I did send her a more updated one. She says, that one doesn't have good enough resolution. I said, well, here, try this one. So okay. anyway, okay. but uh, I'll make sure and send you a picture at Christmas uh, this year, uh, Adrian. Okay. Uh, a more updated one of my family and myself. And, We'll get that taken care of. Appreciate it. Well, I want to thank everyone for your attention, and I hope we've planted some seeds today. Uh, feel free to stop by the, the table and ask us more about this program and how you can get involved. You know, to circle back on the Indianapolis airport, uh, the reason why um, there's a lot of owners in the audience, uh, Eli Lilly, Shell, uh, you know, there's a, lot of there's a lot of large corporations here. And I would tell you that the most successful ACE programs began with owners involved on the board. And what happened was the owner said, anybody who works on my project is going to be involved in the ACE program. Those companies are going to contribute financially. They're going to put forward mentors. They're going to do both. And so I would tell you as owners of large projects to maybe think about the ACE program and getting the contractors. Because guess what? When the owner controls the money and the contractors, uh, you know, Phil Kinney is in the audience with uh, Wilhelm Construction. They played a large role on the airport. When the contractor says to his subcontractors, if you're going to be hired on this job, you're going to be involved in the ACE program in some way. Think about the amount of involvement. And that's what really was made our affiliate successful in Nashville and here. We got owners involved, and they said part of our, part of our working with others is to ask them to give back to the industry. So give that some thought relative to your roles. Uh, and those of you that are uh, colleges and universities, uh, we can always use the financial support from you to set aside funds to fund scholarships. IUPUI has done that, uh, for instance, here. So give that some thought. Very good. Anything else? Well, thank you again, everyone, for your attention. Appreciate it.